folks, welcome to Life on Beagle Road. Today we are doing our ultimate garden reveal. It's the first full tour of everywhere we're growing. We're gonna talk about how we went from failure to what we hope is garden yeah. success. In order to understand sort of where we're at and how meaningful it is to us, you have to understand where we came from first. So let's take a look at the old garden area. Won't be really that impressive. Not that it ever was. Our old garden area is right here behind me. Uh, this is the top corner of our property or part of the top corner of our property. And we thought that this was gonna be a fantastic place to have a garden. Some things that we ran into though proved to make it difficult. First thing is the water source is way over there and trying to get water over here was not the easiest thing in the world to do. One of the other issues that we had with this area is it gets really really swampy. So swampy. <laughs> yeah like everything was just wet Ugh. all the time even when it was dry outside so mold you know tomatoes covered in mold not getting real good growth on anything we harvested some things we got some tomatoes we got like two tiny little peppers <laughs> we got some green beans we did get a lot of what zucchini zucchini but zucchini would grow anywhere yeah you could probably still grow it up here i guess but it's true. now this area belongs to the bucks and the alpacas so we said sayonara, goodbye, hasta luego to this area and went looking for our new area. After that disaster, we decided we should stick to container gardening on the deck. We bought Greenstock's five tiered planters and filled them with lettuce and carrots and tomatoes and peppers and green beans and all the kind of stuff that we eat most frequently. What we found was these planters kept our plants at the right uh, moisture level, kept the bugs away, and it was really easy to keep up with because it was right outside our front door. I didn't forget to water it, and I didn't forget to harvest. Although we vastly expanded our garden, we continue to use a green stock because it's so easy and it's a great place to put things that I'm going to harvest and put right on the table, like spinach and lettuce and Swiss chard. We even have these handy dandy trellises so that I can train things like peas, which you would normally think would be tough to grow in a container. In this one, I have radishes and lots of herbs. And in fact, I think I have a radish here that might be ready. That's so satisfying. <laughs> Down here on the lower tiers, we have some experiments. I've never successfully grown cauliflower, so I'm trying it in a lot of different environments this year, and one of those is in the green stock. I'm also trying Brussels sprouts in the green stock, mostly because people told me I couldn't do it, so I have to see if I can. I had a ton of mint come up from last year. Mint reseeds itself really well, and it even did it in the green stock. So after some of these other things, like the radishes are over, I'm gonna plant more herbs in here and see if I can make a perennial herb garden that I don't have to replant out of one of these green stocks. I've taken the plant every day idea a little bit to the extreme. Like if I find a dirt surface and there isn't something going on in it, I just throw seeds in there, like this lettuce. Last year we grew a birdhouse gourd plant by accident. Bridget found some seeds and shoved them in a pot and uh, we really liked it. So we're trying five or six of the plants this year, including two on the deck that we hope to trellis over the arbor. Another area that we're gardening in, which is still under construction, is this area right here next to our front porch and deck. We're going to try to plant edibles as much as we can right next to the house, including the deck, so that way it's right there on our way to our next garden. But for now, check out how much progress I've made since the last time I showed you. Do you remember those two big rocks that I couldn't get out of the ground? Well, I got them out. 
use the tractor and there they are massive so now let's move on to the main attraction keep in mind we have done nothing but sort of fail repeat fail repeat and try again you know like that's what it's all about just keep trying keep learning try to figure it out what it is that you're doing and eventually you'll be good at it right at least that's our route because what else are we going to do in life you know might as well just keep trying and keep learning yeah welcome to my greenhouse happiest place in the world yeah yeah why so happy it's quiet and peaceful in the rain and there's plants and there's dirt and uh, sometimes there's wine a lot of times there's wine over here we have yet another experiment going on we mentioned that we had a lot of problems with the ground getting soggy and our tomatoes really getting too wet so we're going to grow some in the greenhouse now, as it gets hot out, we'll roll up the side, so it's really just a roof to keep excess water off of the tomatoes and also give them a little more heat, like they like it. We're doing this experiment with mortgage lifter tomatoes and fabric pots from Bootstrap Farmer. You may have heard us talk about fabric pots before, and we love them. It's no secret, so we bought more. The great thing about these is they drain really well, so prevents your plants from, from getting too soggy if you do have a lot of rain. And the fabric pots air prune the roots to the plant so that they don't uh, become root bound inside of a container. It's a really effective way to container garden and bootstraps pots in particular are really high quality and very durable. Something I found that's really different about these are the handles. They have more like a webbing strapping handle to them as opposed to handles that are made out of the same material as the pot. So they tend to be easier to move around and, and the handles don't rip off. Courtney, I noticed that um, they've got labels in them but they don't have anything labeled. Is there like a color coding system? Oh wait, there's one that has a label. There you go. So proud. I mean, they're all mortgage lifters in here, okay? Wait, look. There's the labels in that pot. I'm getting there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> As it becomes time to trellis the tomatoes, we will use these spindles that are hanging from the ceiling uh, to, to trellis the tomatoes. These are made for single stem, vertical support without taking up a lot of horizontal space. Okay, now we're gonna show you the main garden area for real this time. But first, let's use a really high-tech gate to get in to the garden. Go ahead, Courtney, show them. It's so special. Oh, there you go. And then you gotta make sure to hook it over here so you don't get stabbed with the fencing later. Ah, nonsense, nonsense. Before we get into what is planted all in here, let me give you one caveat. Courtney got really excited to plant things, so I don't know that our uh, planting uh, plan is absolutely perfect. As a matter of fact, I know it's not, but I'm gonna live with it. And I figured out how we can try to make it work as best we can. But just know that if you've got a wife like mine who isn't very patient, you're going to have to find a way to figure it out. <laughs> All right, girlfriend, let's do it. Well, I guess we start here at the entrance. Yeah. All right. In this bed, we have green beans because Kenny loves green beans. We have Romanesco. One row of Romanesco, maybe two. You'll see the question mark. And we've got kohlrabi. And why, why do we have green beans on this side of the, the bed? Well, I thought maybe we would trellis them this way to the fence. Outside um, of the garden. Yeah. Yeah. But That's what people do. Yeah. 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 Sure. In this bed, we have peas, cabbage, baby romaine, more cabbage, more radishes, more kohlrabi, onion, some curly crabs, more radishes. I hope you guys like radishes and Swiss chard. 
Did you say peas? Peas, yeah. Because we got peas. We got peas. And a trellis. Yeah. And again, as some of this stuff is done, like the radishes, I'll be able to put in more things like beans. More beans. More beans. All right, in this bed, we have most of our bush beans. Uh, some of them uh, didn't make it through the cold snap. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we also have a random row of peas because why not make me put in another trellis in a random bed instead of putting more beans? And in this corner, we have black zebra tomatoes along with a tiny fairy garden. A raspberry bush I bought on Craigslist and replanted. Hopefully it's gonna start looking better, you know? <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, it's not happy right now. It is not. And some strawberries in another green stalk that we need to finish stacking. Ooh, we got flowers on there. Whoop, whoop. We repurposed parts of our potato towers because we found last year that they were way too deep for what we needed. And uh, we've planted some tomatoes in some and tomatillos in another. And a zinnia, just one. No, there's two. Oh, is there? Mm -hmm. Huh, look at that. Look at that. For our next trellis, we have butternut squash, lima beans, and uh, some magic beans. Magic beans are when you don't remember what you planted. It's a bean, just don't know which bean. Also in this bed, we've planted leafy greens. Things that don't like it very hot. They'll get plenty of sun the rest of this month as, as these plants are starting to grow. But then as it gets really hot in say June and July, this will provide shade and allow us to extend the growing season of our leafy greens. Hey, I bet you'll never guess what's in this bed. Radishes. <laughs> but we've also got curly cress and big Boston and some green leaf lettuce and uh, we snuck in a few pepper starts here. If you watched our previous video on experiments in starting peppers, you'll know we did not have a great success rate this year. So peppers are the one thing that we did buy some starts of. Well, actually they were gifted to us. Kenny was gifted them by my mother for Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> like most of the U.S we had a serious cold snap for an extended period of time this spring. And the, the way that we worked around that was we built arches. Well, I say we, I mean Kenny. Kenny built arches over the gardens that had uh, non-cold tolerant plants in them. And uh, we covered them with plastic overnight. And it did save most of our plants. I think we lost a couple bean plants and I'm sure we had some delayed growth, but uh, fortunately, we were able to save our plants and we hadn't moved things like butternut squash and tomatoes and cucumbers outside yet. We carried them in and out every day in their start trays and uh, it was exhausting. We've got lots of greenery in this bed too, including more cauliflower. Four of these are looking really good. We've also got more peas, big Boston lettuce, more radishes, and more cabbage. Next to this bed we planted a row of sunflowers to give an afternoon sun break to this bed that's full of plants that aren't really gonna like afternoon sun beating down on them in a few weeks. In this bed we have all of Courtney's San Marzanos. So these are our sauce tomatoes. Courtney decided to put 11 tomatoes in this box. So this is gonna be a bit of an experiment. Can we get 11 tomato plants in a three by seven raised bed? I'm going to use uh, the string method where you put stakes, string across, and I don't know, I have to figure it out, learn a little bit more about it, but that's how we're gonna trellis these tomatoes. I feel like that was the easiest way to do it without making some kind of cumbersome apparatus through this entire bed. There you go. Now here is something I know that you've all been waiting for and that is whether or not my potatoes all popped. If you remember, I wasn't sure if they would all pop. Some were just random potatoes rolling around the floor of the place where I got the seed potatoes from and some were actual seed potatoes. And uh, I have great news. They all popped. 
the buckets popped, the fabric pots popped, and my potato boxes popped. Let's check them out. Some took a little bit longer to pop up than others, so you got some shorties and then some bigger ones. But for the most part, we're good. You can see that that one there kind of took some damage from the cold, from the frost. But they're all there, folks, all of them. The kids have been really good about helping with the garden this year. They've been excited and starting seeds and planting. So we gave them a little space here to make a fairy garden as well. In this bed, we have another time where Kenny and I misunderstood each other. Go figure. <laughs> Apparently, I was supposed to plant the vining plants on the outside and shade-loving plants on the inside. Well, I planted the vining plants on the inside and uh, now we've got a really tall trellis. But it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be amazing. It'll look so good. I uh -huh. just know it, sure. I just know it. So we've got cucumbers in this bed. I think they're all cucumbers. There might be some squash, not totally sure. They look really similar right now. You mean because you don't label things? Well, somebody moved my stuff. I uh -huh. had a system and then someone touched somebody it. Somebody else did it. Yeah, exactly. And then in the front, we've got more of Kenny's gifted peppers. We've got some chocolate peppers and uh, lilac peppers. Yeah. Yeah. In this bed, we definitely have cucumbers, so that's a win. We've got some sunflowers that I hope will grow tall enough to still get sun with the cucumbers in front of them. And then I've got some big Boston and uh, mixed Rocky Top lettuce as well. We've got another birdhouse gourd plant down here, which I'm hoping to pair with some long-handled gourds that I am trying to start right now. In this area, we're going to plant directly into the ground with some amendments like alpaca poop, which we have plenty of. What are we gonna plant here, you ask? Well, let me show you. Ta-da! <laughs> All of these plants I still have left. We've got quite a few magic beans left. We have some peppers, both hot and sweet. We've got tomatoes, we've got the brandy wine, we've got cherry tomatoes left to plant. We still have some sunflowers and zinnias to scatter throughout, which will help with attracting pollinators. And uh, then we also have corn and more gourds and zucchini. There's a lot of stuff in there. I know. I think one of the issues that we had was that we were so successful at planting everything by seed this year and we got so out of hand, like we were worried that some of them weren't gonna sprout, but they did and now we have it. We've actually even sold like what, 50 plants? Yeah, we sold off 50 of them already, and we still have all this. Whoo! Ah. What are you gonna do? Those are good problems, folks, good problems. In the areas where we're not really able to use the soil yet because there are roots or it's still really like that gross red clay, I'm trying to plant things that are fairly hardy but will help to improve the soil, like sunflowers. You know, and hide a stump. And also hide a stump. If you remember in our last tour, I had all those daffodils I had to dig out. Well, here they all are, hanging up, drying, so that way I can cut them and store them and then replant them, I guess, what, this fall? We've already given away probably, whew, I wanna say 150 of them. Anytime someone came to buy a plant, we gave them some bulbs. What are you gonna do? Well, folks, we are looking forward to a fabulous growing season. I've never been so excited in my life about our garden, and I really think it's gonna work this time. I really, really do. This area that we're in with all of these beds, uh, this is pretty much what it looked like before we started. Because last year I talked about moving our garden down here, and I wasn't sure it was gonna work out or not, or if we were gonna be able to make it happen. So this coming to fruition is Fabulous. I 
don't even have the words to explain it other than words that sound like fabulous and fantastic and phenomenal and yeah. Don't trip. <laughs>